let's go ahead and come up with a couple of ideas on how to custom quilt my latest quilt pattern called four patch squared now if you do happen to like this quilt pattern the link for it will be down below in the description and it is available in five quilt sizes which are baby throw twin queen and king the program i am using is adobe photoshop which i have already designed an illustrated version of the quilt top and i'm going to go ahead and draw directly on top of it just to give us some ideas now if you do not have adobe photoshop you can also use Procreate, and with Procreate, you can either design a illustrated version of the quilt, or you can take a picture of your quilt directly and then upload it into Procreate or Adobe Photoshop, and then you can go ahead and draw directly on top of it as well. But I am using Photoshop since I've already have it open and I've already designed it, so it's a lot easier on myself. But you use whichever you prefer. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started now do keep in mind that this outer border will be finishing at two and a half inches wide as well as these four squares are two inches square so we do not have a whole lot to work with so we need to keep our designs a little bit on the smaller side and let's go ahead and work in this top corner now first let's go ahead and do some line work and we are going to draw a straight line as best as we can which of course on our long arm machine we will be using a ruler to make sure it is straight and we're going to do about a quarter inch and then we can come down and we're going to pretend there's an invisible line right here and from that invisible line we're going to stop above it a quarter inch as well and draw a line across, just like so. Now we are going to fill in this bar area with whatever we like. Now you can do ribbon candy, so we can go up and create the ribbon candy effect, just like so, and leave it off like that. Then we could travel down, and once again, we're going to pretend there's an invisible line right here for now. And we are going to draw another quarter inch, come down, and from this line, which is the edge of the quilt block, we're going to do another quarter inch across. And whatever we filled here on the top, you'll do the same thing down below. But here's another idea you can do. You can do big ovals and then do maybe small circles and then maybe go back and do a big oval, maybe two ovals, or you can do one and then small circles, a big oval, circles, just like so. And then let me erase our invisible lines real quick because what we will do next are the sides. And for the sides, we are going to then come in about a quarter inch, but go from top to bottom, come in, and now we'll use this as an invisible line, and we'll do a quarter inch, and then we'll go ahead and fill this area in, and you could do something different, you could do more line work, like so and then we'll come across and we'll use this as an invisible line and you can do a quarter inch and then a quarter inch from this side and then you can fill it in with whatever you like as well so now you've kind of created this framed look and then I'm going to go ahead and erase these invisible lines and then what you can do for the middle is wherever you left off, you can either cut thread and then come towards the center, or if you are not a fan of doing that, you can either go at a diagonal from wherever you left off, whether it be on the top, bottom, left, right, wherever, or you can come up and do a straight line like so. That way you can come and create your echo and then maybe we'll do clamshells and finish it off like so. 
and you can come out and then start and make your way onto the next side. Now for the next side, what you can do is you could continue the pattern across. And in this scenario, just keep your herringbones going across. Or we'll remove that. This is where it stops, so you can flip the block over at a 90 degree angle and repeat it the same way. And that means this side will now be the long version, and you can fill it in with whatever you like. Maybe do one oval, and then on the other side will be the long version once again, and then in the middle you can do the shorter sides. That way it will kind of look like a woven effect if you rotate the blocks. Then in this scenario, since I know some of you are not the biggest fan of stitching in the ditch, you could actually, let me get the eraser, you could actually not stitch in the ditch if you do not like that. And you could go off like that. And then instead connect this over and then this could be circles. If you did herringbones you'd continue that pattern and then you, now you will get that woven effect. So that way when you continue the block and let me scroll down a little bit. So this line can just come down and then we will erase this stitch in the ditch because maybe we don't want to stitch in the ditch. And then this is where this will then come across, just like that. So now you'll get this woven pattern or a pattern that's like intertwining with each other. Now, if you do this, I do recommend that maybe you stick to one filler, meaning you'll just keep doing herringbones or this diagonal line work or the ovals and the circles. Just kind of keep it going with whatever fill across if you want to do the woven area or keep all of the horizontal lines the same and then the vertical lines can be something different just to give it that effect and I think that would be really cool. So let's go ahead and slide over and we can do a little bit of a girly theme which we can start in the corner, bounce out and do a feather and then a secondary feather and then we can do some humps and then once again I would probably do the corner feather first and then come out, come out, and then make our way around and repeat the pattern, just like so. And then I would stitch in the ditch to clean up the edges. And for the center, you can just go ahead and do X's and cross everything out like so. Let me redo that one line. And that kind of reminds me of those like holiday cookies that you get in those variety pack tins that eventually become everybody's sewing kit. But I think that would be really cute. Now depending on what type of fabric you have, let's go ahead and go down in this section to give it some space. We can go a little bit modern. And as you all know, a star is my favorite quilt block or one of them. And we can create a star shape and finish it off. And we can fill in the outer areas with zigzags back and forth just to really pack it down if you prefer. Or you can do really any type of fill that you like. But we're going to fill all of this in. And then for the center, you can honestly create any other shape. And maybe let's do flying geese. And you could 
fill in this area. But now it looks a little weird because this side got that and not the other side. So maybe I wouldn't do that now. And that's why it's great to always draw your ideas because it wouldn't be that great if you actually quilted all that and you find out, ooh, I do not like that. So what we could do next is then stitch in the ditch all the way around for another idea. And we can do an orange peel this way. Because we're doing straight lines, let's maybe twist it and do and add some curves. And then you could fill in the orange peel just so it has some separation between the outer star and the center. And that would be kind of cute. And then in this scenario, I would probably stitch in the ditch around the blocks if I was going to repeat this same design in the next block over. That way it does, once again, separate the two. And maybe I would do a different fill for the next block over, just to give it some variety. So maybe we would do pebbles, like so, and then stitch in the ditch all the way around. And then we could do what we did previously, which were X's and then a plus. And that way you can create different star shapes and kind of give each block its own custom look. And I think that would be really cool too. And then of course, once again, stitch in the ditch all the way around. Now let's go ahead and zoom out and scroll down and do a few more ideas. Oops, too far. So let's go ahead and work in this block right here. Now we could do something even simpler and that is doing a quarter inch line work across or half inch, whichever you prefer once again. And then we would go the opposite direction and go across, stitch in the ditch, and then lastly make our way across. And now you will create this woven pattern again, but slightly different. And this would also look really cute continuing onwards, so you can just keep it going. And your corners will be this like scrappy little four patch. And of course, it will look a whole lot better once your lines are perfectly straight. Now I can't draw a straight line, but hey, that would look really cute. And then in the center, if you wanted, you could once again do whatever your favorite quilt block is, or maybe we can do a design like so, and then fill it in with a feather maybe, like a feathery flower all the way around. There we go. That one got a little shaky. And that would be really cute. And then your next block over, you could do something different. Once again, if you like the orange peel look, you can do an orange peel, maybe as a plus, and then maybe fill your orange peels in. Let's go the opposite direction. And then that way you can do like a different little small quilt block in each individual section once again. And that's what's great about this pattern. Your ideas can almost be endless. So let's go ahead and scroll over. Now we could create one more secondary pattern idea and that involves quilting multiple blocks all together and we're going to start in this corner and we're going to do some line work and then once our line work is all finished 
we've now created a pinwheel and we can go in and fill the pinwheel in just like so and then I'm going to do the next side over just to give you a bigger picture and fill it in there we go and now we can do line work and and then for the center you can do another pinwheel and then I'm going to scroll down just a little bit just so we can get our next corners in and these will of course be pinwheels once again and let me fill in the last corner over here for the example just like so and then all the lines that go horizontal I would probably continue that pattern horizontal and then do the vertical lines vertical and here we have it and I think that would look really awesome across the whole entire quilt because then this block over here would once again be a pinwheel and it's kind of like an Irish chain sort of but with your pinwheel blocks so it will continue this diagonal Irish chain pinwheel look. I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say here. I had the idea in my head, but I think it would look really cool because then this pattern would just keep continuing onward. And I think that would be really awesome. If I were to have custom quilt this, so far this would be my favorite one to do. just like that. I think that would look really cool throughout the whole entire quilt. Then you can choose a thread choice that you know could kind of go well with a lot of themes. So in this case maybe a gold thread or that uh, a light brown color so it could go throughout all of the colors. And if this was more of a flowery quilt then you could do like a silver, a gray, light gray, or in I know it's not everybody's favorite but an invisible thread would also look fantastic but I do know they can be a little bit picky to work with but this would look really cool and then once you get to the corner you can just once again continue the pattern like it just ends off and then add the lines like that and Oh, okay, I, I really do like that version. I think that would be really cool. But I went ahead and came up with a couple of designs for you all, which I do hope one of them sparks some interest for you or gives you ideas on what to do for your quilt. But if you could please take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell so then you can be notified for your next amazing quilt project.